Getting ready for action at 125 here in this 2008 EWL Championship. Mike Sees coming out of uh, Shikolami High School, Northumberland, going up against uh, Eric Morrill for Edinburgh, one of six fighting Scots in here. Well, Edinburgh has looked tough, like we said, all the way through. And I guess you got to start at 125. And, and uh, you know, Mike Sees has, has been in the finals here uh, three, four times. He's a seasoned guy. He's seated number one in the tournament. And, you know, he obviously expects to win this match. And uh, again, got past uh, Kyle Turnbull of West Virginia and Ryan Riggs of Cleveland State. Sees on a shot, and it's countered nicely by Morell. And look for that cradle, and has himself a two-point takedown. Nice, good start, and sees quick and out, and back up to his feet. And I would expect a little action here. You know, one, one of the challenges, as you know, is is that uh, the match is seven minutes long, and and uh, people start out pretty quick sometimes. So that seven, six, seven-minute mark gets a little tough. Morell to your left, sees to the right. Morrill beat sees earlier this year, eight to five during the uh, dual meet season. Obviously, uh, these two are going to the NCAA championships here in a couple of weeks just by making it to the final. And then they'll pick at large 12 wrestlers from the uh, rest of the field that will represent this league two weeks from now in St. Louis. You know, so one way of saying that is there's really no pressure on you when you get into the finals of this tournament in the sense that it doesn't mean anything as to whether or not you're going to go to the NCAA tournament. The challenge here is, is about competing and is about preparing yourself for the national tournament because these are the kind of matches you're going to have to wrestle uh, all the way through. You know, and after that quick flurry, we've got to just a, kind of standing around a little bit, watching each other, being a little bit careful because uh, while Seas did give up a takedown initially, Morrill uh, had a nice counter. Seas almost had it, had himself a pretty decent shot there. So now we've become a little more defensive as we've gone into the uh, uh, last half here of the of the first period. Seas won the EWL in 2005. As Tony has mentioned, a runner-up each of the last two years, looking to change that here tonight. Uh, Morrill's out of the state of New Jersey. New Jersey is well represented tonight in the finals, as uh, we will see here over the next couple of hours. Nice headlock, but he doesn't settle his hip very well, and C just kind of follows and rolls through. Gets himself nice in on the single leg on the edge of the boundary there. And they're going to get a stalemate or he's going to blow him out. I can't. More would be make a pretty tactical mistake to let C's pull him back in, but <laughs> that's exactly what's happening here. You know, and again, in college, you, you really both need to be almost completely out of bounds in order for them to blow the whistle. And there he finally gets uh, referee John Nath, blows them out, and go back to the center. 2-1, Morrill with a nice start to the first period. Not a very good shot by Seas. Just really didn't clear anything. Just tried to shoot to shoot and was way too far away. Easy, easy job defending that by Morrill. He's lost this uh, 125 match a year ago. Obi Blanc, who's training for the Olympic team, taking his uh, year right now. One of the best in the world at 125. Well, and uh, there's a nice shot by Seas. Those were some pretty good matches between Seas and Blanc. And Seas gets in on that single leg and is able to finish it for a two-point takedown and takes the lead 3-2 to two with, you know, getting in there with under 20 seconds left in the first period. Looking pretty dominant on top all of a sudden. Morrill just really hasn't moved a whole lot. And of course, we say he hasn't moved, but it's not like Seas is just saying, hey, anything you want to do here. <laughs> well, let's see the uh, first takedown in the opening period here, Tony. Almost gets that single leg. Morrill's able to block it. He kind of turns the corner, goes for the uh, cradle, and then changes it to a single, and comes across for that double leg, and gets himself a nice takedown. And again, Seas can go on offense, too. He's right. been in the big stage before, and here he is on a single leg. Well, it's the same shot. He just takes it a heck of a lot better that second time. And, it, and uh, as you know, you get some quality shots. It's a lot easier to finish when you actually get in on the leg. Morrill was not able to counter that. And we start the second period with Seas on top. And I forgot how long three minutes was. That opening <laughs> period, Tony. If you don't think three minutes enough, try and do a minute underwater or whatever. And these guys are just... Tremendous exertion here. 
Well, it's an advantage to be 125 because as they get a little bigger, you know, when, when that weight, that force comes down on you a little bit, that they don't move quite as quickly, uh, especially as you get up toward the end where they're 250, 260 pounds falling down on top of you. Morrow finished fourth a year ago at 125. Well, that was strange. I, well, it looked like he blew the whistle before his hand was actually on his elbow there, which... That's a point, so we're 3-3 three, three here. Boy, it's a good crowd in here tonight. The people have braved some elements. Two feet of snow we're hearing in Erie, right? You had some friends that uh, burrowed their way down 79 here. Yeah, and they're planning on trying to drive back tonight, which is boggling my mind. But uh, I might a hearty give them group of people. Exactly, a hearty group of people. <laughs> there's no doubt about that. A good stalemate call. Just uh, friend headlock, and nobody was looking to do much of anything there. Well, so far, the strategy on the feet here has been C's really trying to get Morrill to step in, and and uh, sometimes he's been able to do that pretty well and caught that single leg, and other times Morrill being uh, being a little bit more cautious and and trying to stay out and play that space a little bit, try not to step into him so much. And one time C's took a shot, Morrill stepped away, he got himself a takedown. The other time C's was able to time a little better, and, and he gets takedown. Here we are, 3-3. Three, three. That number two that you're looking at that moves back and forth, that's the riding time clock. Explain that a little bit, Tony. Well, the, the riding time is certainly a uh, situation. Oh, Morrill throws C's on his back. He's got a takedown, and I'm not sure if John Nath couldn't see whether he counted any near fall points or not. C's driving, trying to get himself at least an escape, and does so. So one second to go in the period at 7-4. Moral here. Again, he's got an 8-5 decision overseas earlier this year. Nice scramble there at the end. And Seas tries to spin around that corner. Goes for that ankle pick and just gets himself a little off balance. Moral takes him, pancakes him, throws him on his back and has himself not only a takedown but some near fall points. And that splits the score out there a little bit. We say nothing to lose, but I think when you now get into this particular level, you know, that, that, that move's just not going to be available. You just cannot leave that kind of opening. <laughs> no, definitely not. And, you know, those are the mistakes that you make as, as uh, the better people are. They make you pay for the littlest, tiniest mistakes. You get yourself a little bit out of position, your hand, your elbow, your foot a little bit, your weight a little bit, and next thing you know, you're giving up points. Still pretty tight match, though, 7-5, and we've got minute 30 something left in this in the third period and sees definitely has the offensive capabilities to get in and score on a nice scramble there sees really looked like looked like a move really out of frustration to be honest with you he Decided to kind of say, let's let's see if I can just jerk him over here. And he did it once, wasn't able to get it, but obviously felt comfortable enough to take another shot at it and just didn't settle his hip. Morrill was able to roll through and therefore no takedown because if Morrill gets stuck there, not only is a takedown, but you're probably looking at near fall again. There's Tom Flynn, the head coach at Edinburgh. It's just on your screen right there. He's taking over for the legend, Bruce Baumgartner, is going to be joining us at 157. Gregor Gillespie, the defending national champ at 149, up two weight classes this year and a heavy favorite a couple of weeks from now. You know, and a nice scramble and a nice takedown by C's. Just really relentless, just keeps going at him. Does a nice job of working the corner, getting a good angle, keeping pressure on that hip, and doesn't allow Morrill's hip to come up and gives himself a nice shot at a takedown. 7-7 seven, seven with 30 seconds left in the match. And Steve's building up riding time. Now, we you asked about riding time earlier, and we got interrupted because they were scrambling around. But what riding time is you have that point, you have a one minute advantage. It gives uh, one point to whoever has a minute advantage. And right now, Mike Sees goes. He's sitting with that in the bank right now, well, I believe. Well, you got eight seconds left in a minute and six. There's no doubt about that. So, going to look like he's going to have that one. So, Morrill is. Got to get himself out with eight seconds. Now that warning for stalling certainly helped. We call Mike C's for stalling. Stops the match. Eight seconds left. morrill has got to get himself a good start. Tries to roll through. 
just a Granby roll and, and just loses momentum as he does that. He's able to crush his hip with it pretty good. And there's the match, 8-7, winning on riding time. A riding time point, Sees wins it. Roars back, he's down 7-3 after he's in some serious trouble late second. Good comeback. Well, you know, that's as much a testament to your kind of mental toughness as anything else. You go down like that, there's a lot of people that panic. They obviously, uh, the advantage of being a veteran there is to keep your keep your cool and keep peppering at them because you know you have time left, and Mike C is able to come back and pull himself out of victory with a uh, takedown at the end and hold on for some riding time, gets himself a win and an EWL championship.